Hello wrestling fans, the wrestling wizard here and welcome to another video and in this video we're going to try and explain Wrestlemania 37 and the ending of the Randy Orton Fiend match of course where on paper I suppose at face value Alexa Bliss sent the Fiend away, betrayed the Fiend or so it appeared and I know there's so much talk in regards to this and how they were going to continue the story and the truth is we'll never know the full story because of course we don't have the creative genius the man himself Wyndham Rotunda aka Bray he's not around anymore and sadly and tragically we'll never know the full story so let's go all the way back to Wrestlemania 37 and honestly this is just my fan opinion I go into quite a lot of detail with this so um, grab a coffee or whatever <laughs> and um, just hear me out with this one so I honestly think there's a real life element to this and if we peel away the curtain and peel away the kayfabe it certainly appeared at the time that it was a last minute crazy absolutely ludicrous never made sense Vince McMahon booking decision and at the same time and if you watch the Bray Wyatt documentary you'll know around this period prior to this period Bray Wyatt had a lot of frustration within WWE from a creative standpoint I mean they were literally destroying his genius creation and that I mean Vince McMahon with some ludicrous booking decisions which very clearly were not Bray Wyatt's vision this wasn't what he envisioned when it came to The Fiend losing on the grandest stage of them all to an RKO via an Alexa Bliss distraction like it never made any sense and you've got to think from a real life perspective at this point Wyndham was so frustrated they literally all but destroyed the Fiend character not not literally well I suppose they did burn him alive and all of that but it wasn't booked anywhere nearly as good as it could have been and I think we're all agree on that the concept was fantastic but the delivery and the creative booking decisions were just absolute ludicrous so Bray was frustrated, so he was pretty much, on a real-life perspective, ready to give up that version of The Fiend. Literally, and I think there's a lot of parallels to this in real life, because at this point he probably thought, yeah, sod it, I can't continue this, like, how do I pick up the pieces here? And that's why I feel that post-WrestleMania 37 Firefly Funhouse segment was really positive. Bray Wyatt was teasing, essentially, a new family, a new start, that he would come back bigger and badder than before. He knew eventually he would come back, but in order to come back, pick up the pieces and make this make sense, continue this story logically, he had to go away. And of course, Bray Wyatt was released from WWE, and I think it was a combination of, right, at the moment we've got our creative differences, go away, the door is open to come back when you feel ready. Which is why I feel like that Firefly Funhouse segment was almost like Bray Wyatt parting WWE but knew eventually that he would return and that's why in Bray Wyatt's WWE absence we would often see cryptic messages on Twitter such as don't worry I'll feed you baby birds and I think that was pretty much all but saying that with a caption to accompany a picture of the fiend that the fiend was going to return and Bray Wyatt knew that the fiend was going to come back bigger and badder before so of course that brings up the question like how were they going to explain this now upon Bray Wyatt's return of course we saw Bray Wyatt wearing an Uncle Howdy mask and at the time we didn't have a clue what was going on but to explain Wrestlemania 37 with some logic now it's well possible that it was actually Uncle Howdy that was controlling Alexa Bliss at Wrestlemania 37 therefore both Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss were responsible for killing the world. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing because you might think, well, hang on a minute, how can Bray be responsible if he was playing The Fiend? Well, you've got to remember, upon Bray Wyatt's return, he was very psychologically damaged, I suppose we could say, right? He was not thinking clearly. And it seemed like when it suited him, he was Uncle Howdy. Remember what he said, I am the eater of worlds, I am Uncle Howdy, I am him. But in the lead up to getting there, he was almost in denial that Uncle Howdy was part of him or part of his darkest psyche. Now, we know, of course, Uncle Howdy was a character way back when in Bray Wyatt's childhood that haunted him. But Uncle Howdy was very much a part of him 
upon his return to WWE in Extreme Rules 2022. And he knew that. And whenever anything went down, he could just blame Uncle Howdy because he was just a servant to Uncle Howdy. He was going to have to do horrible things, but ultimately he wasn't responsible for his actions. And that ties in with the psychological report that Uncle Howdy would leak because Uncle Howdy knew everything that Bray Wyatt was thinking. And it would say that Bray Wyatt had issues psychologically and was irresponsible and wouldn't accept the consequences of his actions. So you've got to remember at WrestleMania 37, Wyndham was frustrated. So maybe he gave up the world. He was responsible for killing the world. Uncle Howdy sent the Fiend away. And again, you might think, why would Uncle Howdy want to send the Fiend away? Well, he was sending that version of the Fiend away. He knew in time that the Fiend could come back bigger, badder and better than ever before. And of course, revealed from the Bray Wyatt documentary, we knew the Fiend was going to evolve. We were going to see this version of the Fiend, the Fiend 2.0. Therefore, Bray Wyatt in that Firefly Funhouse segment, again, remember the Firefly Funhouse is everything going on in Bray Wyatt's creative genius mind, was going to return someday. But he had to go away before picking up the pieces. It's such a complex story to explain because we don't know for sure as fans the ins and outs of Bray Wyatt's creative genius mind. We really don't. It's just speculation. But the take that I took from all of this, I suppose, was that Bray Wyatt was essentially Uncle Howdy. Not literally as in physically, but he was very much influenced by Uncle Howdy. And if he were to cause havoc in WWE, cause destruction and hurt and pain and suffering, it was actually him. Ultimately, he was responsible, but he could always blame Uncle Howdy, the creepy guy in the background, as to why this happened because he's just a servant and he goes where the circle takes him right now it was absolutely genius because the ghost of the man who sold the world in uncle howdy when he first introduced himself basically made it known that he blamed bray wyatt for wrestlemania 37 and also alexa bliss because of course at extreme rules we heard uncle howdy pop up on the tv set in the firefly funhouse and say the words who killed the world you did, madam, i.e. Alexa Bliss. We did, is in Bray Wyatt. And you can even hear Firefly Funhouse Bray giggle in the background. Go back and watch it. At that point, you kind of thought, hang on, something's fishy here. But we knew that the ghost of the man who sold the world, i.e. Uncle Howdy, knew everything about Bray Wyatt. You killed the world. You sent him away. It's all your fault. You're just a shell of the man that you once were. How well do you know your neighbour? Remember that promo? And you could hear Bray Wyatt in the background going, Lie for me. Die for me. And that's why the lyrics of Shatter are so meaningful. And we'll cover those in a moment. But in a nutshell, Uncle Howdy knew a lot about what Bray Wyatt was thinking because ultimately Uncle Howdy was Bray, right? Uncle Howdy, the ghost of the man who sold the world, knew Bray was lying left, right and centre. He said, he doesn't watch his matches and then we saw Bray Wyatt watching his matches. He said that he doesn't want to be the Fiend. He didn't literally say that, but he said he doesn't want to wear a mask again, i.e. saying he doesn't want to be the Fiend again. But we knew, Uncle Howdy knew, deep down that Bray Wyatt craved the Fiend and that the Fiend was going to return. Bray knew that, but again he could just blame Howdy. Uncle Howdy knew that Bray Wyatt was going to use his brother to cover his lies, literally use his brother to portray Uncle Howdy to make it look like all he needed was a little push but actually it was Bray Wyatt in not full control I'm going to say but with full awareness what what was going on he was using his brother the level of detail was just genius the fact that he had these flashes of this version of Uncle Howdy like this very version and it was like Bray was thinking strategically about how he could cover his lies how he could present a different version of uncle howdy which would later be portrayed of course by his brother and this was almost like him going through his thought process how can i make uncle howdy look how can i make it appear that i'm not the one in control i'm not the one creating chaos and even the little details with the crown of thorns on uncle howdy's hat even to this day 
of course, flashbacks to the crown of thorns that Alexa Bliss was wearing at WrestleMania 37 when, of course, she cost a fiend. He knew eventually that Alexa and Bray would reunite and they would both bring out their dark sides again to embrace the darkness, to revel in what you are. Uncle Howdy knew that Bray Wyatt was wearing a mask. He knew that full well. And he did say several times, if you're afraid of the aftermath, then just don't take the mask off. And this was evident through the genius storytelling of Bray Wyatt, where there are several promos. I remember when he was revealing this stooge fake version of Uncle Howdy, that you could see Bray Wyatt appearing to take the mask off or go to take the mask off. So you knew on a psychological level, Bray Wyatt was not only lying left, right and centre and in denial, he was clearly covering up the real him, Uncle Howdy. Uncle Howdy blamed Bray Wyatt for WrestleMania 37, as we said earlier, we knew that. And he knew that he was the one in control. That maybe Uncle Howdy was the one who was controlling Alexa Bliss, but at the time Alexa Bliss thought she was the one in control. He knew eventually that the Firefly Funhouse was going to return, and I believe this was the plan all along. And even way up to the Bray Wyatt return, this was the plan. Because... What we saw at Extreme Rules was the Firefly Funhouse characters coming to life. And if you remember the Raw segment after Extreme Rules and Bray Wyatt's return, we got that promo where we heard, I used to think that the prison inside my head was the only place where I could truly be free. That was essentially saying that he used to think that the Firefly Funhouse was just in his head, creative that was psychological. But this now is going to come to life. And that's why Extreme Rules 2022 we saw the Firefly Funhouse characters out of the Firefly Funhouse. And also, let's not forget, The Fiend was included in this as well. So yes, of course, The Fiend was going to return, even though at the time Bray Wyatt said it wasn't going to happen. We knew, or at least Uncle Howdy, should we say, knew that Bray Wyatt had all this rage inside of him, this anger. And we saw that when Bray Wyatt lashed out at the cameraman on that segment towards the end of, I think it was December 2022, when he literally delivered the mandible claw on a cameraman and said the words, let me in. Well, certainly it sounded like that anyway. I'm pretty convinced he said that. So this was the transition into madness, the descension into darkness, I suppose, if you like, for Bray Wyatt. And Uncle Howdy knew this all along because from the return, he knew it was going to happen. Uncle Howdy knew that Bray Wyatt was covering up all the attacks on LA Knight. Bray Wyatt, I'm pretty sure, was responsible for that or getting other people, maybe other members of the Firefly Funhouse to do the dirty work for him. Remember the first time we saw that interaction between LA Knight and Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt said that he knew what it takes to get respect. For the longest time, he'd been pretending that he wasn't proud of the things that he does and now he doesn't know how true that is. So you could clearly see that Bray Wyatt was psychologically deranged and LA Knight was looking at him like he's literally having a meltdown right now in front of me. And this was full confirmation that Bray Wyatt was psychologically unhinged and was telling a lot of lies along the way. And if you really, really want to simplify the whole story, just look to the Shatter theme and the lyrics within it. I am the coil. I am the spring. I am the ghost in the machine. Basically saying, I am Uncle Howdy. Die for me, brother know not what you've seen, love one another, know not where you've been, lie for me brother, know not what you said, use me for cover. Pretty much why, to this present day, the Shatter theme fits Uncle Howdy, because all along, Bray Wyatt was using his brother Bo Dallas to cover his lies, to make out that Uncle Howdy was Bo Dallas, or Bo Dallas was Uncle Howdy, should we say? Well, we knew that wasn't the truth because we knew Uncle Howdy was a part of Bray Wyatt. It was genius because a lot of the diehard Bray Wyatt fans would look at all the devils in the detail and work out quite quickly that Bray Wyatt was lying and that he craved the fiend. But the casual viewers would look at this new character in Uncle Howdy as a separate entity and that Bray Wyatt was just a servant following Howdy. And maybe those fans didn't even explore the possibility that the fiend was a genuine possibility to come back. And that's why this was genius, because it appealed to both sides. A lot of people didn't understand it, I don't think, the creative layers and the depth to all of this. 
but us diehard fans could read between the lines and kind of get the rough gist of what was going on, which is why to this present day, I'm pretty much convinced, all but 100% convinced, that Alexa Bliss will be part of the Wyatt Six, that she's always been part of the Wyatt Six. I think the only beef was that Alexa Bliss, in kayfabe of course, thought that she was the one in control at WrestleMania 37, thought that she was the one in control post-WrestleMania 37, but she wasn't. The ultimate puppet master, the one in control, the lead man, is Uncle Howdy. And now, that is, I suppose, legitimately getting controlled via Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas isn't Uncle Howdy, but he is certainly influenced by Uncle Howdy. My life for you. He is literally honouring the legacy of the spirit of Bray and obviously following the words of the Red via Bray Wyatt's wishes. What would Bray Wyatt have wanted? He would have wanted Alexa Bliss to be part of the Wyatt Six, 100%. The planet WrestleMania 39, I'm pretty sure, was for Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss to reunite, to bring out both of their dark sides and revel in what you are. We would have saw The Fiend, a new character from Alexa Bliss, I'm pretty sure, in those two being servants to Uncle Howdy, who really, deep down, <laughs> and you peel away all those layers, that it's really Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt is the coil, the spring, the ghost in the machine. Which is why this all makes complete sense. Bo Dallas has literally given his life for his brother. Lie for me, brother. Use me for cover. He is still doing that. But this time, he's embracing the spirit of Bray and Uncle Howdy. Bo Dallas isn't Uncle Howdy. He is just influenced by Uncle Howdy. But now, probably being quite psychologically deranged himself now, because he's emotionally torn and understandably so, lost his brother, he probably thinks he is actually Uncle Howdy. So, so deep, isn't it? There's so many creative layers to all of this, but that's what makes it so intriguing. And what do you think about WrestleMania 37? What's your thought? What's your input on all of this? Because I truly believe that Uncle Howdy and Alexa Bliss sent the fiend away. AKA Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss killed the world. I am the ghost of the man who sold the world. I mean, it doesn't get any clearer than that, I personally feel. So I don't think Alexa Bliss is going to be an enemy of the Wyatt Six. I think she's going to be a member of the Wyatt Six. And I think that's exactly what Wyndham would have wanted. I really do. I honestly think that's exactly what he would have wanted to happen. And I'm pretty sure it's going to come sooner rather than later. At least I hope so. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much for watching the video. As always, it'd be very much appreciated if you could like the video, share the video, and even better, subscribe if you're new. We'll catch you in the next one.